Love is the topic I'm talking about. Uh, the last paragraph about love in Islam on Wikipedia. Ishq, I-S-H-Q, is divine love. So, uh, again, Islam and Christianity both are identical. Absolutely identical. Ishq, divine love, is the uh, emphasis of uh, Sufism in the Islamic tradition. So they both have love for God. Christianity has like two main laws. Love for God, love for others, love for your neighbor. So love for God, love for your neighbor. St. Augustine had an important distinction between lust and love. Uh, there's several Greek words for love. There's agape, filio, storage, and eros. Uh, but eros and storage is not mentioned in the Christian faith. So, practitioners of Sufism believe that love is a projection of the essence of God to the universe. So, love is God. That's another thing Christianity says. I think John, book of John 1, God is love. Book of John First book of John, chapter 4, 7 through 8. So God is love. Lust and love are different. There's four different distinctions between love. They include child to parent love, sexual love, and filio is a human response to something to be delightful. So hedonism. Uh, they, and then agape is um, it's parental love. So I guess love of the oppressor, the way God loves humanity. So Islam, practitioners of Sufism believe that love is a projection of the essence of God to the universe. God desires to recognize beauty, and as if one looks at a mirror to see oneself, God looks at himself within the dynamics of nature since everything is a reflection of God. The school of Sufism practices to see the beauty inside the apparently ugly. Sufism is often referred to as the religion of love. God in Sufism is referred to in three main terms, Allah, Allah is God. Allah and God is the same God, Allah. And Sufism is re re referred to in three main terms, which are the lover, loved, and beloved, which the last of these terms being often seen in Sufi poetry. A common viewpoint of Sufism is that through love, humankind can get back to its inherent purity and grace. The saints of Sufism is infamous for being drunk due to their love of God, hence the constant reference to wine in Sufi poetry and music. So they're drunk. I'm drunk in your love. I'm drunk with your love. Buddhism, comma, is a sensuous sexual love. It is an obstacle to the path of enlightenment since it's selfish. Karuna is compassionate and mercy, is compassion and mercy, which reduces the suffering of others. It is complementary to wisdom and is necessary for enlightenment. So uh, sexual love, so this is sim similar to St. Augustine is uh, an obstacle in the path to enlightenment. So sexual love actually stops you from reaching enlightenment. Sexual love is different. Lust and love is different in Christianity and Buddhism. It is also different uh, in that sexual love is the bad love and the good love is the love that is the one that you love for another person, the, the, the goodness of another to make sure that they're happy and that they enjoy are enjoying themselves on this planet. Make sure they enjoy life. So the good love for the Buddhist is compassion, mercy, since compassion and mercy reduces the suffering of others. It's complementary to wisdom and it's necessary for enlightenment. Advesa and metta are benevolent love. This love is unconditional, requires considerable self acceptance. This is quite different from ordinary love, which is usually about attachment and sex and rarely occurs without self-interest. Instead, in Buddhism, it refers to detachment and unselfish interest in others' welfare. The Bodhisattva ideal in Mayana Buddhism involves a complete renunciation of oneself in order to take on the burden of a suffering world. The strongest motivation one has in order to take the path of Bodhisattva is the idea of salvation within unselfish, altruistic love for all sentient beings. So it's love by the Buddhist, uh, love by the Hindus, political views, free love, the hippie love. So this is um, has an appeal. I I uh, lean towards hippie love. The term free love has been described. 
It has been used to describe a social movement that rejects marriage. I don't reject marriage, which is seen as a form of social bondage. The free love movement's initial goal was to separate the state from sexual matters such as marriage, birth control, and adultery. So free love is trying to get the government out of the bedroom, the life of the bedroom, or the life of um, the household, actually, or the life of marriage. Uh, the government shouldn't have anything to do with marriage, shouldn't have anything to do with birth control, and shouldn't have anything to do with adultery. That's what free love is saying. There is some justification, I guess, with the state-sponsored marriage to make sure that it's 50-50, that everybody gets 50-50 with the property. Which I believe in. It's claimed that such issues were the concern of the people involved and no one else. Much of the free love tradition is an offshoot of anarchism. So Emma, Gold, Emma Goldman, Goldman, Emma Goldman, Goldman, she's a... An anarchist in the late 1800s during the times of Wild Bill Haywood, Eugene Debs, uh, 1917, she was deported for protesting the draft. So Emma Goldman was against the draft in World War I and was deported to Russia. So yeah, free country. Eugene Debs goes to prison for 10 years for opposing World War I. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Free country. Yeah, it's got a long history of being free, let me tell you. So, much of the free love tradition is an offshoot of anarchism and reflects a civil libertarian philosophy that seeks freedom from state regulation and church interference in personal relationships. Uh, according to this concept, the free union of adults are legitimate relations which should be respected by all third parties, whether they are emotional or sexual relations. In addition, some free love writing has argued that both men and women have the right to sexual pleasure. In the Victorian era, this was a radical notion. Later, a new theme developed, linking free love with radical social change and depicting it as a harbinger of the new anti-authoritarian, anti-repressive sensibility. So, that's um, free love is radical social change. Free love, there's a sexual revolution in America during the 60s. A sexual revolution was when women started burning their bras, saying they weren't going to just stay in the house and be... Um, you know, uh, a housewife slash sex slave, that they were going to assert themselves and have political rights, be allowed to speak out, and to um, fight against patriarchy and, uh, you know, the dominating patriarchal society that we live in. All over the world, actually, it's a patriarchal society. There's a few matriarchal societies. Black folks lean towards matriarchal society, but they're still patriarchal also um, I think but I've heard the comparison between white women and black women and or the black family and white families and black families are more matriarchal the women have the power the women love their children and that's the strong bond whereas in white people relationships the bond was between husband and wife and there was love for the kids but the love for husband and wife trumped over the kids so while the free phrase free love <coughs> many people in the early 19th century believed that marriage was an important aspect of life to fulfill earthly human happiness middle class Americans wanted the home to be a place of stability in an uncertain world this mentality created a vision on strongly defined ginger role gender roles <laughs> ginger roles which led to the advancement of the free love movement while the phrase free love is often associated with promiscuity promiscuity in the popular imagination, especially in reference to the counterculture of the 1960s and 1970s, historically the free love movement has not advocated multiple sexual partners or short-term sexual relationships. Rather, it's argued that love relations that are freely entered into should not be regulated by law. The term sex radical is also used interchangeably with the term free lover and was the preferred term by advocates because of the negative connotations of free love. By whatever name, advocates had two strong beliefs, opposition to the idea of forceful sexual activity in a relationship and advocacy for a woman to use her body in any way she pleases. Laws of particular concern to free love movements have included those that prevent an unmarried couple from living together and those that regulate adultery and divorce as well as age of consent, birth control, homosexuality, abortion, and sometimes prostitution. Although not all free love advocates agree on these issues, 
The abrogation of individual rights in marriage is also a concern. For example, some jurisdictions do not recognize spousal rape or treat it less seriously than non-spousal spousal rape. So if you're married, you can get raped. That is possible. There is such thing as spousal rape. Uh, anytime you have sex without consent of the other person, that is rape. So just because you're married to them doesn't mean you can just fuck them willy-nilly. That is not a right given to you. Free love movements since the 19th century have also defended the right to publicly discuss sexuality and have battled obscenity laws. Philosophy of love is a, law, is a field of social psychology. Philosophical views, the philosophy of love is the field of social philosophy and ethics, which attempts to explain the nature of love. The philosophical investigation of love includes the task of distinguishing between various kinds of personal love, asking if and how love is or can be justified, asking what the value of love is, and what impact love has on the autonomy of both the lover and the beloved. There are many different theories which attempt to explain what love is and what function it serves. It would be very difficult to explain love to a hypothetical person who had not himself or herself experienced love or being loved. So it's very difficult to explain love to a hypothetical person who had not himself or herself experienced love or being loved. If you don't know love, then it's hard for you to pick up love. Forrest Gump knew love. Forrest Gump knew love. Jenny did not. Eventually she did. But she didn't in the beginning, nor did her father. So, Hunter's, uh, Forrest Gump's mother knew love. She taught Forrest to be strong and showed him compassion. So, Forrest Gump's mother was there for Forrest Gump. Um... Yeah, philosophical investigation of love involves the task of distinction between personal love, asking if and how love is can be justified, asking what the value of love is, what impact love has on the autonomy of both the lover and the beloved. So I love you, but how does that affect my autonomy? So autonomy, I don't know. I actually, I, I feel like it all connects. All, love connects everything. Okay, so while I love myself and I love another. And I love another person very much deeply so. That love for somebody else gives me reason to get up and be autonomous and to be independent and to be free. So I can be a good example for others. I would need to enjoy life myself. So I need to be free. I need autonomy. And so love fuels that, that freedom. And then with that freedom, I want the person that I love to be happy so I have compassion for them. So with that freedom, my actions should help me and them achieve nirvana, achieve you know self-enlightenment or uh, self-actualization in Maslow's theory of hierarchy. So in Maslow's theory of hierarchy, self-actualization is the very top. And so love should help you get through all seven of those stages of Maslow's theory of hierarchy. Food, clothing, water... Um, safety, love and belonging, self-esteem. So if you love somebody, then you want to see them develop into the fullest person that they can be. Um, so you're not sacrificing yourself, your freedom, not directly. You're choosing to love that person. And to love that person, you care about their happiness. To love them is to love you and to love them. I feel like it's, it's both. And in fact, I would take another step to love them is to love myself and is to love them and the entire world. To love somebody, to love an individual, is to love humanity, to love what it is that we're doing here. So to love others is to love the world. Um, all that makes sense to me. So... Uh, there are many different theories which attempt to explain what love is and what function it serves. It would be difficult to explain love to someone who hasn't experienced it. In fact, to such a person, love would appear to be quite strange, if not out, outright irrational behavior. Among the prevailing types of theories that attempt to account for the existence of love, there are psychological theories, the vast majority of which consider love to be a very healthy behavior. There are evolutionary theories which hold that love is part of the process of natural selection. There are spiritual theories which may, for instance, consider love to be a gift from God. 
And there are also theories that consider love to be an unexplainable mystery, very much like a mystical experience. So, nobody knows what love is. Love is a Morris, or a, 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 what's that word where you can't grab a hold of it? I'll come back and I'll tell you what love is. More on love coming up.